My name is Kenneth Lundin and this is the usual talk then about the Ericsson team and what we have on the agenda. Do you hear? Is it is this strange? I think it's this microphone. Now? Not good. It is it is good, okay? Okay, now then, about this agenda. Uh, we had our latest release, um, released uh, late February, and uh, that's the one you were running, I suppose, all of you. Uh, and I would like to thank you very much for, for testing it uh, before the release. It was very valuable, and uh, the release went very well, and uh, we have only found uh, minor problems. And we always strive to, to improve performance in every release, so, and it's much about scalability. And uh, if you, despite that, should uh, discover something that is not better than before, even worse than before, I think you should let us know so we can fix it. In this era of multi-core processors and more and more cores, it is quite tricky to be better on all systems at the same time. When you optimize for something, it can, and we measure, it seems to be better, but it could be worse on another system. So we try to, to focus on some systems. But hopefully it will not degrade on any. Uh, the release plans for, for the future. We have then so-called so service releases. I hear that you <laughs> happen something here with the microphone. Uh, here in June, September and December, preliminary service releases for R16B. And then we have the next major release in about a year. I can also mention here that we have found recently a Windows bug. It's present in both R15 and R16. And it shows itself when you're using Erlang now or can impact the timers in the system. And it's under heavy load, many schedulers. So it's not easily detected or it doesn't appear very often. I mean, we haven't heard about it in, in the whole lifetime of R15. But we plan to, to build a new binary release of that. The roadmap then, what we are working with right now, I talked about maps yesterday, and that's one thing that we plan to, to have into R17. We are working on schedulers. The schedulers, they can go offline automatically if they don't have enough work to do. Or, I mean, if you have real really small workload and too many schedulers. The reason to do that is actually can be more efficient to run on fewer schedulers, or you can achieve energy savings if you can, by this, turn off course temporarily. Dirty schedulers, a way to to make it safer to do NIFs and drivers. They will then run in a separate thread. Uh, th this could be seen as an enhancement of the async pool. We have protocols, D DTLS, which is uh, 
SSL, TLS over UDP or SCTP, uh, ASN.1 optimizations, Unicode. In R17, the Uni according to our plan that we have already published, the default in source code will be UTF-8 or Unicode in, in R17B. We will improve the pattern matching, better possibilities to, to bind size fields in binaries, and this kind of pattern matching is also needed for the pattern matching <coughs> regarding uh, maps. We have plans on a new string module. Uh, supporting then Unicode strings, IO lists, binaries. And we will remove things as well. A number of tools based on the old graphical library, GS, like Table Viewer, Process Manager, AppMon. Because all of these tools, they will reside in this observer, which is a VX-based tool. Longer term, I have a few points here. Of course, we have a long backlog, but here are some things to mention. Native processes, that, that's a step after the dirty schedulers. And by, by this, we can, we can use native processes to rewrite the file and I.O. servers and make them more efficient. We are working on just-in-time compilation for airline. It's not for, for release in R17, it's longer term. And we, we are trying to find new concepts for parallelism. What we have today is support for concurrency. But you have a concurrent problem. But if you want to be parallel just because of speeding up a sequential problem, that's another thing. You need perhaps to share data between processes. <laughs> <laughs> Garlic will be provided. <laughs> I mean, because copying a, a big data just because of working parallel is sometimes too expensive. You can create some kind of groups or so. Okay. We want to improve our way of working with the Alan community. Uh, we plan to, to make it public. Uh, the current status of patches and bugs that comes in through the airline patches and airline bugs mailing lists. So you can follow the status of those, possibly with an issue tracking system. We will have an open backlog of things that we have, think we have to do. And you can also su suggest things to add to that backlog. And you can help us to, to implement things in the backlog. We will have a wish list of contributions based on that backlog. And uh, we will improve the routines around contributions. And as Francesco said last, uh, yesterday, this industrial user group is formed and uh, this will, will be done in, in cooperation with that group. We'll get help from that group and I encourage you to, to join that group 
if you want to support the community. We will also, as a step in this direction, uh, start having experimental branches at GitHub where we can release new features so that it will be easy for you to, to test them and give feedback. And here's the difference between putting all the features in the branch on its way to R17, for example, because then it's a mix of all new things. Here we can have a separate feature together with the stable R16, for example. And maps is one thing that we are thinking of releasing us in this way. And there is other things like sharing, preserving, copying, which is developed by the European Community Release Research Project. Dirty schedules is another one that could be released like this. And here is some examples of a wish list of contributions where we can I mean co cooperate. Sometimes it, it requires cl quite close cooperation with us then to have it in the system, but some other parts are quite separate. And of course not everything of this kind is not ne necessarily part of the Erlang OTP distribution. It could be separate tools enhancing for the Erlang experience. Okay, that was all from Ericsson today. Any questions? Yes? There's a lot of opinions and there are lots of perspectives about this, but uh, the, what, what is the Ericsson's position uh, about this on the, uh, making the improvement or making some changes of the messaging performance uh, of the, the algorithm within our, or I, I mean our, our own, um, within our own being or with inter, inter being communication? Okay, message, it's about speed of message passing. Yeah, message passing, that's all. And uh, I mean, we always strive to, that's one mechanism that we strive to make more efficient in every release. So, I mean, I know about uh, users thinking that uh, the message passing got worse between R14 and R15. So far in R16, I don't, I'm not aware of anything. But it can all, always be special corner cases, which is not part of our tests, where we try to, to look like typical applications. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that 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 is one thing. Uh, I mean, we have started with R16 here to to try to have something we call characteristics impact in the release note, and that is the impact we can foresee in this new release. 
and that's new information for, for users. But then we have other things like if we have, and maybe that could be any characteristics impact, but we have changed the default when starting up Erlang to always use async threads. And that's the case you are describing. But if you don't have async threads, you can achieve better performance, but you have an unrobust system which can block on, on potential dangerous file operations. But you get better throughput if everything goes happy. <coughs> Any other questions? Uh, yes. Any plans to work on uh, floating point performance? No, no direct plans. <laughs> because our main customers uh, don't need that. <laughs> but we can, get, if we get help in that area, then. <laughs> okay. Is uh, IPv6 support in EPMD now a default part of the release? Yes, I think so. When I last built it, I had to turn on a, a define or something. Is it, it doesn't it build it by default? I'm not sure, actually. Uh, I'd like to emphasize that uh, my consensus <coughs> at this at, has been, has been uh, long in a long queue waiting list. But um, there is a um, there is some the one one of the problems about the Windows um, emerging on, on Linux or BSD it will work. But uh, uh, the other thing is that uh, the, I, I remember that you saying that the Intel that uh, it will block on. I, I saw the code. I saw the code merged into our system there, but it's 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 conditional <coughs> compiled. Yeah, it's so I wasn't it's sure if it was officially supported or not because it was not compiled by default. Yet. Is that correct? I think you're correct. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I put things mm -hmm. like to like uh, uh, IPv6 uh, distributed error. Yeah. Yeah. What do you say? <laughs> yes, I think we have. Uh, even if it's not the default build, we have all, all that is required in, in the code. Mm. Okay, I have to check that. Yeah, does the graphical front end include like a web UI for some of the tools that used to be in QC? I think if you ask something that would be incredibly helpful for the systems we build, it's like some sort of web UI on those tools. Those tools are amazing, but I can't run them most of the time in the data center. So the question was, I didn't hear so well, but you are asking for web UI tools or web UI. Right, so all the observer tools, basically. Yes. The, that, that whole set of tools is amazing, but it's often not very useful because of the actual graphical engine. Not installed or not available. But most of, of these graphical tools, you, you, you can run them on another box than the one you are inspecting. Right, no, I know we do it, it's just... Uh, <coughs> yes, it would be nice with a web U UI. Please contribute. We actually have one Allen application called web, web Tool that we plan to remove because it's Crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's used in, in one uh, uh, tool called Crash Dump Viewer, and we plan to, to do that uh, inside this observer tool instead. Okay. Okay. Seems the questions are over. Thank you very much, Dan.